everybody. It's Monday, June 28th, and that means it's time for another episode of Chatting with Agnes and Cecilia Nonprofit Conversations. I'm one of your co-hosts, Cecilia Seth. I'm the principal and founder of Rogue Tulips Nonprofit Consulting and Association Management Services. My co-host and friend, Agnes Amos Coleman, can't be with us today due to a schedule conflict. So on behalf of Agnes, I would like to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our global audience. We're here today with another in our Cyber Story series, which means one of our favorite guests and one of our regulars, Sanjay Dio of 24 by 7 Security is here. And today we're going to talk about cyber security insurance. Welcome back, Sanjay. Good morning, Cecilia, Agnes in absentia. Um, <laughs> looking forward to this engaging conversations, as you know, that the hackers are not sleeping and they are continuously going on and on and on and I think so today's topic is an exciting topic. I think so especially with all of the major news headlines about ransomware events lately from healthcare uh, facilities to pipelines to your home computer people are getting attacked uh, and it seems to be on the increase. And ransomware is reminding me of something I read uh, the other day, a new book came out about, it's called The Snatch Racket, about how kidnapping was a growth industry in the United States in the 1930s. And so I'm thinking ransomware is sort of similar to hostage taking for money. Uh, I, I don't know what you think of that observation, Sanjay. Yes, ransomware is, is become very prevalent, very pervasive, you know, they, it, I think for the bad actors, it doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are. Uh, I've had uh, I've dealt with ransomware for a two-person pharmacy, mm -hmm. um, all the way up to four thousand-person company, all of them, right? So the ha the hackers are not differentiating between a small and a large. They basically perpetrate the crime, and if the subject basically decides to pay, guess what? That's payday for them. So. It doesn't matter which industry, it doesn't matter how small you are, it doesn't matter how big you are. If you don't have the right technology, if you don't have the right backup, if you don't have the right defenses, you're going to fall prey. And then the decision is to pay or not to pay. Well, and I think that's where a backup system comes in really handy. So you don't have to pay because if you keep all your data secure, you can just download it into another system, which you've pointed that out before as well. And we've talked about that. And Today, we wanted to actually talk about cybersecurity insurance because I'm sure that industry is getting a lot more interest and a lot more customers. But I think a lot of us don't know the benefits and then the things we should consider before buying cybersecurity insurance. So could you share some of your thoughts on that? Absolutely, Cecilia. So one thing I want to say upfront is I am not a cyber insurance broker, underwriter, uh, I have no affiliation to the insurance industry. I'm a cybersecurity consultant. Uh, but having said that, I have, uh, well, so a, a number of my clients have used cyber insurance in various situations, and I am required to carry cyber insurance uh, as part of serving my clients. Um, cyber insurance is an instrument that actually helps companies in many, many, many ways. And Basically, what it does is it allows a company to operate without fear, connecting to the internet, making sure that they do business online because the cyber insurance will cover any uh, malware incident, any hacking incident, any phishing incident, any ransomware incident. And the cyber insurance allows you to basically, uh, uh, from a client perspective, cover the cost of any lawyer's fees, mm -hmm. any remediation that you have to do. So if a machine is infected or if number of machines are infected, to actually clean them, rebuild them, consultants that you hire, mm -hmm. that basically is covered. Any forensics analysis, <clears throat> that is covered. And if you are in the regulated industry, so if you're in healthcare, if you're in financial services, any cost of notification, notification to the government, notification to the subjected audience, all of that is covered. So that, that pretty much covers everything I think most of us would consider, uh, especially things like malware. I think that's probably one of the more common things we all probably deal with. I know I have my built-in uh, virus 
uh, mechanisms turned on on my computer. I also have a subscription service uh, called WebRoot that I use that protects my hard drive. Um, I also, uh, not that I'm like getting paid advertisement, but these are just the things I use. I use Carbonite as well on all my computers. So all my files are always backed up all the time. And uh, for our audience, that's helpful if your hard drive melts down too, which is probably a topic for another day with Sanjay. But <laughs> what, what are some of the things though? Now we've talked about, you know, it helps with malware. It helps with phishing. Uh, it helps with actual ransomware. But uh, you shared an example with me uh, as we were talking about this episode about uh, somebody had lost one laptop and, and it like almost brought their whole system down. So could you again remind our audience the importance of monitoring that sort of thing? Yeah, so in this specific incident, it was a doctor's office. So it, in healthcare, there is a law called HIPAA and the HIPAA law basically um, uh, expects the physician or the doctor's office or the hospital that they, pro they implement adequate controls, uh, adequate protection to protect the patient information. And in this case, it was one single laptop which was not encrypted and it was a smash and grab from the car of a doctor in a parking lot. Oh. And because that laptop was not encrypted, everything on that laptop was deemed in scope. What does that mean? Basically, a lawyer and a forensics examiner was hired. Uh, we had to open a cybersecurity insurance claim. And then the forensics examiner had to go through the laptop to find out how many patient records were there, right? How many patient records were stored on the laptop? How many patient records were in the email that was stored on the laptop. And just to give you an idea, um, there were 6,000 patient records on that laptop, including any downloaded face sheets, any x-rays, any uh, notes, Excel spreadsheets, and emails that the doctor had e e exchanged with his, uh, uh, with his staff, with the insurance company, with the patient, and to investigate those 6,000 patient records, uh, the expense just to go through each of them to see if there was any sensitive information, any reportable information. So under HIPAA, the, the law basically says, if you have lost any patient record, um, there are various thresholds, but you have to report it back to Office of Civil Rights or the Department of Health and Human Services. And also you have to report it back to the patient. And if you exceed 500 patients, then you have to draw a, a full page ad in the local media and, and the list goes on and on and on, right? So that's healthcare. Wow. So, so that's the burden that uh, all of these regulated industries have. Guess what? All of the expenses related to the lawyer, to the forensics examiner, to the technical consultants, reporting to the government, all of that was covered under cyber insurance. Well, thank goodness the insurance covered most of that. But I think the lesson here is don't lose your info in the first place. <laughs> you know, protect your equipment <laughs> as best you can, protect your data sure. as best you can, because cyber insurance will not cover everything, uh, I think, in the long run. Uh, and as I think, uh, and Sanjay, please correct me if I'm wrong, it, from what little I know about it, it's kind of like car insurance. If you make one yep. too many claims, you might get dropped. Absolutely. And we are starting to see that, right? In the last five mm -hmm. years, number of traditional cyber, uh, number, of tra number of traditional insurance companies started getting into cyber, underwriting cyber, uh, cyber incidents. Mm -hmm. And now they're learning that it is very expensive, very frequent, right? The hackers are constantly, constantly coming in, right? Accident is when you actually sit in a car and start driving. Mm -hmm. Very rarely when your car is parked in the driveway that somebody comes and hits it. Right. But here, if you're connected to the internet, whether it's day, whether it's night, the hackers have an opportunity to come in. And so the cyber insurance companies are now starting to figure out that this business of underwriting cyber incident is starting to become very expensive. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So let me break down what a cyber insurance is, right? Cyber insurance has three different components. Cyber insurance has coverage. What will that insurance cover, right? One office, two office, all offices, all your businesses, all your employees, all the endpoints, servers. So coverage and what is the total amount of coverage? 1,000, 5,000, 1 million, 10 million, 20 million. You know, what is the worth you have, right? The data that you have, they will estimate that. So some of the questions they will ask you is, uh, what do you store, right? Do you have patient data? Do you have financial data? Do you have uh, employee data? Do you have customer data? So that was, that'll be one of the questions that the questionnaire, when you, when you try to go get cyber insurance, will ask you. So coverage, total coverage is one element that you need to understand what that is. The second is the premium, right? The premium you're going to pay on a monthly, yearly basis that is going to underwrite the total value of things and the total risk that you have that you're underwriting. So the premium is the second thing. The deductible, the deductible meaning if an incident happens, what is the first few hundred thousand million, whatever you have to pay before the insurance claim covers it? What we are saying is five years ago, the coverage used to be huge, the premium used to be very low, and the deductibles were negligible, right? Even the cyber insurance companies didn't know the extent of all of these damages. If you you think about it, right, in property casualty, in in the case of uh, of a damage, physical damage, uh, we have data worth 300 years. And so the actuarials who do the pricing, they know the different kinds. Mm -hmm. In the case of cyber insurance, we have data less than probably 10 years. Right. So the cyber insurance companies don't know the extent of damages, the use cases under which things can happen. So what we are seeing, especially in the last 12 months, is the coverage is going down, the premiums are going up, and the deductibles are now five to 10 times what they were offered last year. Wow, in one year. In one year, because the damages are, the damage is huge and is very frequent and uh, is frequent even in one customer, right? So we have seen a number of large companies getting ransomware or getting some kind of breaches multiple times. And so the cyber insurance companies are starting to basically figure out, hey, things are really, really, really getting bad. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it it is a constant, uh, the hacking, the ransomware, uh, the the constant uh, search for data that you can sell on the black market uh, or, you know, steal people's identities, which I guess is why you buy that on the black market in the first place. So uh, yeah. We, uh, we need to wrap up a little early today uh, for Sanjay's schedule. So we want to thank Sanjay for being here with us again uh, this month for another episode of Cyber Story. Uh, do check out Cyber Security Insurance. And if you want to know more about Sanjay's company, you can visit his website. Uh, Sanjay, what is your website? Uh, thank you, Cecilia, for mentioning. My, my company is uh, www. 24 by 7 security, all one word, 24by7security.com. We have a number of blogs. We have a number of articles, white papers. Please feel free to browse, peruse. If you have questions, drop us a note. Drop a note to Cecilia, and she will find me and get the answer for you all. That's but thank you again, absolutely, for, for this uh, delightful conversation of a very morbid topic that is yeah. just getting so prevalent right now, you know, pick up CNN, CNBC, Wall Street Journal, and it, all they're talking about is hacking, hacking, ransomware, hacking, ransomware. Well, you know, and it's sort of like that book I mentioned, The the Snatch Racket, which is about the 1930s. There's times in the 20th century and now the 21st century where taking something that somebody else wants back becomes a growth industry. So the only thing we can do is try to protect ourselves as best we can. And people like Sanjay Dio and 24 by 7 Security, they cannot write you a cyber insurance policy, but they can help you uh, prepare better. So maybe you don't need to use one. So 
thanks again, Sanjay. We always love having you on the show and we will see you next time. On behalf of myself and Agnes, thanks for joining this week. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about Rogue Tulips Nonprofit Consulting, check us out online at roguetulips.com. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Cecilia.